villages made out of cardboard boxes sitting out along the road and people living in them. The roads such as they were, I mean, if you want to call them the trails, whatever they were there. Uh, but people were looking for food and raiment and they were content. Uh, it's interesting to see some of these people when you go out and see these people. And I went up to one of the islands uh, in the northern part there of the Philippines and, and lived with them for a week to see what was keeping them going. And in that case, it was because of a mission outreach during World War II that everybody from the chiefs down through the, the uh, villages knew the Lord Jesus Christ as their savior. Everybody professed to know Christ. And they had uh, their uh, services every, every Sunday and they would, uh, they would uh, had their Bibles and they believed uh, and yet they were in poverty as we would see it. <clears throat> yep, living, I mean, if somebody got a refrigerator or a freezer box, boy, that was really big time to sleep in, to live in. Uh, and they had rain, rainy seasons there too, and cardboard doesn't last long in the rain. Uh, but you, you, I'm trying to give you a picture, and, and well, just on the news this week, we saw in San Francisco, Main Street, all the homeless people and the people out there that are, you know, whether they're there because they, uh, that's what their desire is for life, or whether they're there because of bad times that have hit them. Whatever it is, they're there, and it's a mess. And so people, they're trying to help out and trying to uh, get people going right. The drugs are flowing crazily out there. Now, thank God that the drugs in, back in the 60s weren't, didn't seem to be flowing much in the, many of the countries I went to. Uh, but they did have their bad, bad situations there. But many people were so content. How can you be content in such things? My mom and dad, going through the Depression, uh, were content with the things that they had. And they helped many people out because God had richly blessed him and my dad in his farming uh, expertise and the time uh, expertise. Now, he, he never got out of grammar school, by the way, uh, but he could do anything that uh, engineers and builders and scientists can do today. Uh, now, you know, that's just the way it is. But uh, God blessed him and blessed his family uh, through tough times. And when we were growing up, why, we were pretty much self-sufficient on the farm. We had a little bit of everything. We only had to go out and buy certain, certain things uh, or trade some of our commodities for them. Uh, and yet, we were content. We were a happy family. And you could be content in those things. We were content in going to church on Sundays. Whether there was hay down and rain forecast for Monday or not made no difference. It stayed down and God was going to have to take care of the rain and the hay. Uh, we didn't work on Sundays. We didn't do farm work. The only thing we did was the necessary care of the animals. And that's all we ever did on Sundays. The rest of it was just provided for the Lord and to be with family, friends, to fellowship. Uh, and we all went to church together every Sunday. I mean, how do you, how do you get... Uh, I can remember all the pins I got for and different things for all the perfect attendance for a year. And this, you know, going to Sunday school and church and things. And, and uh, why? Because that's just the way my dad and my mom were. Well, they were set that way. Now, did uh, all of us children turn out the same way? No. Uh, each has to make their own decision when they get older. And the world can allure you and can drag you away if you're not content with what the Lord's done for you. And you can start looking for riches. Look at the, here where it says, they that, verse 9, they that will be rich. They that will be rich, that's their desire and their will that they get rich. That's what they're setting their minds on, that they would be rich. They fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. That happens to people. That happens to people that have been raised in a godly atmosphere. 
but having food and raiment, let us be there with content. You find that hard to believe. Well, uh, the days can come quickly in America where we're looking at that and where we see the food lines again like they've had in years past, uh, in the 20, 30, 20s, 30s there primarily. Uh, but uh, verse 10 says, for the love of money is the root of all evil. Uh, don't love money. Use it for God's glory for whatever you need to use it for. And render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's. And render unto God the things that are God's. Uh, the love of money. Money is not evil. Don't get that wrong. Being rich is not evil or wrong. Love of money is wrong. The love of money is the root of all evil. Uh, don't, don't love money. But if you get money and the Lord blesses you in a rich way, Thank God for it. Root, it's the root of all evil. The love of it is. Now, which while some coveted after. I almost used that for the text of today. Which while some coveted after. People covet after money. Why? Because they love money. They think it's going to solve all their problems. Uh, money will not solve your problems. Don't covet after money. And, and what happens to these that have coveted after money? They have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Erred from the faith, the body of, a, of a revealed truth, what we have, our faith. And people err from that uh, because they've coveted after money. You say, well, I don't cover it after money. <laughs> Just give me more, Lord. <laughs> See, we have to be very careful how we look at things. Uh, we can uh, take money and be very thankful for it when God gives us that. It's like the, uh, <clears throat> you know, are you grateful for all the things God gives you? What you have, not what you don't have. Uh, it's like the old guy that you've heard many times that was walking down the street and he's, he's asking the Lord, Lord, just give me $20 so I can get some food for my family. And, and, uh, and he sees, he's walking, and there's a $20 bill stuck in the fence. And he picks it up and says, never mind, Lord, I found one. You know, no, the Lord gives you things, you know, and you need to be thankful and you need to be content with what you have. When you... Uh, need something then cry out to the Lord he's waiting and he's gracious and he'll give you things uh, we have done that all our life as we had needs and many times uh, most most major things in my life and in the ministry as I'd ask for God's direction I would ask for my wife to confirm that direction and she wouldn't even know what I'm talking about or where I'm at and she'd come up and say you know Paul I think we ought to do this it just sounds like something that, you know, the Lord be pleased with or whatever. And I'd say, thank you. Thank you, Lord. That's just exactly what I needed. And so uh, God will do those things. Just be content with what you have and what he's given you. Um, <clears throat> so they that will be rich fall, that, that, that will be rich uh, not because they're going to become rich, but if that's their will, that's what they want to do. They want to be rich, they fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, don't covet after things. Uh, God gives us the warnings in the Ten Commandments, don't covet things. Uh, Paul says, now there are some thing, good things to covet. Co covet after the things that God wants you to have and after the, uh, the fruit of the Spirit and the things, uh, you know, winning souls and telling people about the Lord, about the things in God's kingdom. Uh, those are good things. You can covet after and it's not bad. But don't covet after the things of the world and things that are bad for you. Uh, <clears throat> coveting. Uh, some while some coveted after, people were covered. And what did they do? They erred from the faith. Don't covet after money, the love of money, uh, or you are going to err from, have err from the faith and pierce yourself through with many sorrows. That's what happened to many here. 
I don't think it can happen to you and that it won't happen to you because it can. And so that's the whole key to be content. Contentment, godliness with contentment is great gain. What'd you bring into the world? Nothing. What are you going to take out of the world? Nothing. Just whatever you lay up in heaven ahead of you. You're not going to take anything out of the world. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, thou, O man of God, what are we supposed to do? Flee these things. Don't chase after gold and riches. We saw how silver and gold, uh, when do you have enough? You never do. Not if that's what your whole goal is. Uh, you got to get more. You've got to get more. O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Uh, those are things we should be doing as Christians. And those are good things to, to go after. Uh, just covet righteousness and godliness and faith and love and patience and meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. That's what you've been called to. So then he gives them the, uh, he gave Timothy the charge there. But anyway, uh, so we shouldn't be coveting after these things. Look at um, verse 17 there of chapter 6, 1 Timothy 6, verse 17. Uh, charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. Uh, don't trust in your finances. Don't trust in your insurance. I had a, a man uh, in the church had a construction business, and he, uh, uh, they never were able to afford or have insurance of any kind. Now I'm not telling you don't have insurance, don't have health insurance, don't do these things. It's just I'm giving his testimony. And so they finally had, uh, they, they were able to get health insurance. And the next year his son used it all year and they had some terrible things happen after they got health insurance. And I was sitting in the hospital with him uh, one day uh, with his son not knowing if he's going to live or die and and he said I mean just crying and said Paul we never had any of these problems till we quit trusting God and bought insurance now you can say well it was just providential that you you bought the insurance because all these things happen now you know uh, well I I think that you can trust God for anything he says we can. He says that he'll meet our needs, that he'll take care of us. Uh, he doesn't say that you're going to have to, you have to be taken care of by health insurance or life insurance or any of these things, which, you know, whatever. But that's up to you as an individual to make up with God what you want to do. But charge them that are rich in this world, they be not high-minded nor trust in uncertain riches. He, he became trusting in all the money he was making in his business and the insurance that he could buy now and all these things. And that's what he said they were trusting in. <clears throat> Instead of the living God, who giveth all rich, us all richly, uh, richly all things to enjoy. God gives us these things to enjoy. Uh, that they do good and that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate. Communicate in the Bible it means to give money, to help with needs. And so here we see that uh, rich people, uh, they should do good. They should be rich in good works. They should be ready to distribute, uh, willing to communicate. And yet you find that many of the rich people aren't willing to give anything up. Now, uh, I've known a number of very rich families that uh, were just, they tried to give away everything they had for the Lord. Uh, they'd give 90% of their stuff away and they still had another 100% given back to them. And God will do that too. God will re reciprocate and give back. Uh, and, but uh, be willing to communicate, willing to give your money to help out. Uh, don't love that money. I, I, a great thing in this church is when we see needs of missionaries and we see needs of people, we want to meet them, if at all possible. And that's the way it should be. 
Uh, verse 19 says, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. And so they're laying up a foundation. They're laying up treasures in heaven, the Lord would say. And we may get to that over there in Matthew 2 yet today. But uh, <clears throat> So uh, look at 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1. Mr. Joseph's got his hands full there. 2 Peter chapter 1. <laughs> Oops, I'm in the wrong place here. 2 Peter 1. Look at verse 2. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. According to his divine power, hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that he that hath called us to glory and virtue, uh, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. We see here in uh, 2 Peter, Chapter 1, uh, how all things have been given to us that pertain to life and godliness. What? Through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. Uh, we have the things for godliness in our life. We just need to uh, let them work and let them do what they're supposed to uh, through that knowledge that we have that pertain unto life and godliness. Um, and so it says we're given exceeding great and precious promises by those that be partakers of the divine nature. You've escaped the corruption of the world through lust. Listen, if you're trusting Jesus Christ as your savior and you're living for God and trusting him to run your life and take care of things, you can be content with him and you won't get caught up with the corruption that is in the world through lust. And there's plenty of that uh, that we'll see. I don't know how much we'll get into that. But let's look at uh, Hebrews chapter uh, 13. Back a few pages there. Hebrews chapter 13. Verse 5 says, Let your conversation be without covetousness. Now conversation in the Bible is your way of life. Okay, let your way of life. It's not talking about vocalizing things. Uh, the word conversation uh, is never used in the Bible to mean that you're talking to somebody, okay? It's talking about uh, your way of life. Let your conversation be without covetousness. Uh, you shouldn't be thinking about covetousness and shouldn't be dwelling on coveting things. And be content with such things as ye have. Uh, don't start thinking about all the things you don't have. Start thinking about all the things you do have. And be content with such things as you have right now. You can say that, well, that's tough, you know. Well, we're building a house. We're, we, we're in a little trailer there, and we need some more space, and we need some, you know. Uh, well, just be content and ask the Lord. Show him your needs. He wants to hear from you and see what he does for you, okay? And uh, he'll do great and mighty things. He's done that all our life for us. Uh, he says, be content with such things as you have. Why? Why can you be content with such things as you said? Because he said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. That's our God. He's not going to leave you or forsake you or just leave you uh, there with nothing and, and you know, go fend for yourself. <laughs> That's not our God. Uh, so that we may boldly say, why? He's going to help you. He's not going to leave you. The Lord is my helper. You can say that. The Lord is my helper. I will not fear what men shall do unto me. I can say that. My wife can say that. The Lord has been our helper throughout our life. And uh, whatever he wanted done, he did for us. Uh, he's our helper, and we're not going to fear what man's going to do unto us. 
Prayer. Pray about things. Request things. Let God take care of it. We can go into the many cars throughout our life that we got. Only one of them uh, we uh, I lusted after and wanted it, and it was a mistake. Uh, instead of letting God provide one for us, and and those things uh, then that make helps you remember. Just trust God when you ask for something. Let God give it to you. Don't say, "Well, I want that one." <laughs> no, that's like the all the preachers. Lord, I got to have a new car. Get me a new Rolls Royce. <laughs> No, that's not necessarily God's will. It's your own lust and looking for something that you don't need. Uh, nothing wrong with a Rolls Royce. They're a good car and they last. They're, they used to. I don't know how it is nowadays, but um, anyway. Uh, um, okay. Let's see. That was in uh, Hebrews 13 there, verse 5 and 6. Look at James while we're close there. Just a page over for me. James 1, and verse 14 says, But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. So we get enticed. We're drawn away by our own lusts. We're drawn away, and we get ourselves into a mess. Uh, when the temptation comes, God will give you a way out of it. Don't, uh, he, he says he's faithful. And he will give you a way out of it. Just find the way out of it if you're tempted to do something you know you shouldn't. Uh, <clears throat> okay, then in... Uh, well, we won't turn there, but in Proverbs 13.10, a common verse that most of us know, uh, only by pride cometh contention. Uh, you know, the pride of life. Uh, Look who I am! <laughs> You know, that type of thing. You know, oh, I'm something. I've got riches. You know, just bow down to me. <laughs> that's, that's the type of attitude that people that love money can have. And they can think that they are, uh, what, they are the cat's meow, I guess I've heard that term. <laughs> and they're, they're the ones that it all ends with. No, that's not true. Uh, be content with such things you have that God has given you and be thankful for it and you'll get along a whole lot better than being lifted up. Uh, he, he is, uh, God is happy with those that will humble themselves and let him exalt them. Uh, <clears throat> the, uh, look at 1 Corinthians 10, 1 Corinthians 10. First Corinthians 10. An interesting portion of scripture here is it talks about the children of Israel coming out of Egypt uh, and talks about the rock, the spiritual rock that followed them through the wilderness. The rock was Christ. They drank of that spiritual rock. He gave them water from the rock. Uh, <clears throat> But many of them, verse 5 of 1 Corinthians 10, many of them God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Uh, many, most of them, anybody over 20 years of old, old uh, except for Caleb and Joshua there, uh, were not allowed to go into the promised land. Uh, the ones that rejected, you know, they came back, oh, no, we can't go in there, the, the giants in the land, and that's just the way it was. So uh, these things in verse six says, these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Don't lust after things. Um, don't be idolaters. Uh, don't commit fornication, verse uh, nine. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them tempted and were destroyed of the serpents. Neither, verse 10, neither murmur ye as some of them also murmur and destroy to destroy. Uh, look out for your murmuring. Don't murmur about things. Just be thankful to the Lord for things. And don't murmur uh, about, against God, okay? Um, these things happen unto you for examples, and they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. 
And then he says, Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall, and, the, and there is no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that you may be able to bear it. And so we have some uh, words there from 1 Corinthians 10 to help us uh, through this life. Uh, murmuring and the things of... Uh, God not being well pleased. Uh, just be thankful that God gives you all the things he does, the abundance and the things that you abound in. Uh, look at Galatians 5. Well, let's go to, uh, yeah, go to Galatians 5. That's okay. Galatians 5. In Galatians 5, verse 16 says, This I say then, we talk, here before this he's saying in verse 15, don't bite and devour one another, and, and uh, you know, be careful, love your neighbor as yourself, and so forth. Verse 16, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. There's the key right there to contentment. Walk in the Spirit of God, and you'll not be lusting after things, the lusts of the flesh, the things that you don't need for the flesh. The flesh wants this, the flesh wants that. And I tell you, I have trouble. I walked through Stewart's, I got some milk, and I walked by the counter there, and I saw these packages of donuts, and I saw these candies, and I saw all this stuff. And, oh, my wife would love to have a, uh, you know, and, and I would too, <laughs> but uh, she likes especially the uh, apple fritters. You know, I, I thought, oh, they got apple fritters. I, I said, no, I can't do it. We don't need it. We shouldn't get it, you know, and we'll just do without it. We'll be content without it. And we are. We were. I mean, it's just, you know, but it was hard. Why? I was tempted. That's a simple thing you say. Well, that's the way life is. And these simple little things, boy, they can really drag you down and drag you into something that you never cared for. Um, anyway, where was I at? I was in Galatians uh, chapter 5 and verse 16. So uh, this I say, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The, the, the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. They're contrary one to another. Uh, you have to uh, be led of the spirit. Uh, and then you're not under the law, the Bible says. And so uh, be careful about that. Uh, in uh, Philippians Philippians 4. Uh, Philippians 4. Oops. Yeah. I can't get my pages apart here. Okay, Philippians. Philippians 4. <laughs> I found it. Philippians 4 here. <clears throat> Look at verse 10. Let's begin there. And of course, if you want some things that you should can think about and uh, about the peace of God, Verse 6, verse 7, verse 8. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Um, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And then he tells you what to think on there. Things that are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, good report. If there be any virtue, any praise, think on these kind of things. These things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, Paul says, and the God of peace shall be with you. Verse 10, but I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again, wherein you were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. Uh, so they wanted to help him out, but didn't have the opportunities. Now he says, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. That's a key thing for every Christian. 
no matter what the state is that you're in, I'm not talking about the states of the United States, although that makes a difference too. Uh, whatever state you find yourself in, uh, be content. Are you abounding? Be content. Are you being abased? Be content. Uh, whatever state you're in, Paul had to learn to be content. It says, I've learned. In verse 12, it says, I'm instructed. I know both how to be abased, I know how to abound everywhere and in all things. I'm instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. Uh, so that's the way of life. Abound, suffer needs. But he learned and he was instructed by these things to be content, no matter what the situation, be content. Uh, he was content to go even when they said he's going to be stoned. <laughs> and he went and was stoned to death several times, <laughs> supposedly. And yet he went on preaching for the Lord. And he knew how to be abased. He knew to how to abound. Now I've known, I, we knew a family that you've heard about possibly out on the West Coast that could, they were abased all the time. They had very little. They just kind of got along on whatever things that came along for that day and it was uh, where they lived and their vehicle was a mess and it was just kind of a you know get along today well they could get along fine and they were happy and content uh, but then he inherited or a, 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 a nursing home and he became the owner and manager of it he couldn't abound. He had no idea where he was at and how to abound. He had vehicles everywhere. He had whatever he wanted to drive. He had money. And, uh, and that's what he told me. He said, he gave it up. He just said, I, I can't handle it. I'm done. And he walked away from it. Uh, why? Because he never learned how to abound. Now, that's a strange thing. Uh, but there's probably a lot of street people that have never learned how to abound. They, even if they bound, why they don't know what it is. And they just squander their money and they, they do foolish things. And so uh, whoever that is, I mean, it, I'm talking about Christians and, and non-Christians alike. Uh, that's the way of life. But he knew, uh, Paul learned, he said, and I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. We need to learn that no matter what state God has us in, we need to be content with the things that we have. Uh, now, we go on down through here and we see, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Uh, obviously, we can do that. Notwithstanding, you've done well, you did communicate. Again, he, they gave him money. They helped his needs with my affliction. Uh, the Philippians know also that at the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as giving concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. For even in Thessalonica you sent once and again unto my necessity, not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. But I have all and abound, I am full, having 